Oh, it's a hot one. Oh my God. I forgot how hot it was here in the summer. Am I in the middle? Does it matter? Time to melt. So I should apologize if you can hear Farley panting, but it's hot. Hi everyone, welcome back to What's Going On. Today I'm going to show you how I made this. I don't really know what they're called. Cover up, open kimono, spring cardigan. There's a few different names that people call them. I don't know. All I know is that I wear them quite often. I like to throw them over dresses. I like to throw them over tank tops, anything like that. I'm just around the house or if I'm running out quickly. It's just a really cute addition. But I decided today that I am going to be copying this one. Well, I, I copied it already. As you can see, it's already done. So I did it. I don't normally do my intro where I've already completed the garment, but this was actually really easy. It took no time at all, and I traced it from the very start, cut it out, and then made it all within a couple hours. I did mine without using my serger, and honestly, it took about three hours from start to finish, so it wasn't that bad. So I had every intention to actually show what I was doing step by step, but then last night I ended up tracing out the pattern and then cutting it out, and then I was like, you know what, I'm just going to cut out the actual pieces, and then once I did that, I was like, this isn't gonna take me that much longer. And then I just kind of got it done. It's just so basic that I didn't really see the point of stopping and telling what I was about to do. I figured just doing a voiceover like this over top of it while I'm showing you what I was doing would probably be a lot simpler because it was that easy. It's very basic. It's only three pieces to put together. <laughs> it's very basic it's only a few pieces to put together and as i was going along i'm like this isn't going to be that great for me to just like stop and talk through it so i figured i'd explain the steps i did while i was doing them and then go from there I got this one i think like four years ago at forever 21 i've had it for a while now i've actually had to fix it a few times but i just like it so much it's nice and airy i really like the color i just throw it on top of whatever so for this cardigan it has the two front pieces it has two back pieces and then two sleeves. So the first thing I did was obviously decide which one I wanted to use. And then I just flipped it inside out and I just kind of studied it a bit just to see where all the stitches went together, how many pieces there were, that sort of thing. Instead of having the back seam down the middle, I ended up cutting it on the fold so I wouldn't have this. And the back seam is actually done with French seams. <gasps> French seams. So then with it inside out, I decided to start with the back piece. I folded it in half and I took the middle seam in the back and put that right up against the edge of the paper. So that would give me the straight line down the back. And then I just lightly pulled it out and made sure that it, all the seams were flat. The paper I'm using is rolled Ikea paper, so it's pretty thick and it's really hard to be able to pin the fabric down. So I just used some books, but you can use pins or you can weigh it down with pattern weights just to make sure everything is flat and it doesn't move whenever you're tracing it. For most of the edges, I was able to just trace around with a pencil. For all around the side seams, since it's kind of hidden, I just took my tracing wheel and I went around those seams. If you don't have a tracing wheel, you can definitely just use a pencil as well. Or if you take a pin, you could poke down into the paper all along the seam and then just connect all those dots whenever you're done. When you are tracing around it, try not to touch the fabric or move it at all. I was really light with the tracing wheel whenever I went around it and I was really light with the pencil as well because you don't want any warp seams. But when you do finish tracing it before you cut it out, what I like to do is actually measure my piece of paper, the pattern, and measure the garment to make sure it's all the same. If anything is uncentered or uneven, you can just fix those seams that way. And then once you're done, always add in your seam allowances and cut them out with your seam allowances included. So you don't forget like I normally do.
the side edges all around the sleeves and the neck edge, I only did a 5 8 seam allowance, but I would actually recommend doing one inch to one and a half inch seam allowance, depending on how you decide to finish the project. to name all your pieces and then just cut everything out and that is it for your pattern pieces. London dropped its dignity. Yeah. So has France and Germany. Yeah. All the hands are dancing to a raggedy melody full of originality. Sing it, so. The folk who live in sunny Spain give it out, give it out. dance to a strain. Yeah. They call the Spanish tango. Baby. Dukes and lords and Russian czars, men who own their motor cars, throw up their shoulders to that raggedy melody full of a rich. So to stitch it together, I started off with the shoulder seams first. I decided to do French seams for the shoulder seam and all along the side seam, which I definitely recommend because it gives a really clean inner edge. But if you have a serger and you have the correct thread, it will be so much easier to just serge all of the edges. This is where I ran into my issue. I thought that this fabric was blue. It's actually green. And all I have is blue serger thread right now. So I wasn't about to run out and go and try to find a green that matched. So I decided to just go with the French seams. So it all turned out fine, but honestly, it would have been so much faster had I been able to use my serger. I did try with white thread because obviously there is some white and cream in there. So I didn't think it would be that bad, but I found whenever I rolled it under, you could still see the white thread through it because it is so see-through. And I really just didn't like the look of the white thread on it. So I ended up just doing the front seams. It turned out fine. And I actually really like that I did it this way, but it would have been way easier had I been able to use my serger. After I finished the shoulder seams and the side seams, I went ahead and hemmed all of the neck and down the front. For this one, again, because I didn't use my serger, all I did was turn everything over about a quarter inch, I pressed it down, and then I rolled it over again, pressed that down, did a stitch through it all so it's a rolled hem, and then again gave it a final press. The next thing I did was add on the sleeves. For this, I also did a rolled hem, and I wish I would have went with a one inch, even a little bit more of a seam allowance because this fabric was super hard to press over and get a really clean rolled hem. It ended up working. It's not the cleanest thing ever. Having a serger obviously would have been even better. I don't know if you can actually do French seams on sleeves. For some reason, I didn't think of it at the time, but I kind of wish I was able to go in now and try it. Comment down below if you shouldn't do French seams for sleeves, but I just thought it would have made it look a lot cleaner and it would have been way easier to do than try to do a rolled hem under there. But like I said, it all turned out, it looks pretty clean inside, so I'm fine with it. When the sleeves are on, I did a rolled hem at the base and then one at the very bottom and it was done. with how it turned out. It's definitely one I'm going to be grabbing for. I really love the color of it. My dress that I decided to pick with it is not 
the best one I could have chosen, but I really wanted to see what it looked like with pink and I'm really happy with this color combination. So I just decided to wear it. But there's so many different looks you can do with it. I've seen some with shorts, some with really cute dresses. You can even make them floor length, midi length or shorter like mine. And again, it's just something that you can throw on over pretty much anything. Honestly, there wasn't really anything to go wrong other than pressing, which was really annoying because this fabric didn't love to be pressed, but using the Taylor's Clapper, it actually worked really well. I know this isn't like my normal video, but honestly, once I started going, it was so easy. Normally I stop and chat along the way, but there was nothing to stop for. It was just so easy and simple to put together. I wasn't following a pattern, so I wasn't trying to think ahead or anything like that. It was just it was just a really easy project, and I'm kind of glad I have one of those right now because after the past couple weeks of sewing, and also how hot it is right now, it was really nice to just do a quick, simple project. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. However it went. <laughs> I'm so worried about editing. If you did, please give a like and I hope you subscribe. I will see everybody on Tuesday for my next video. Got my ice pack. Today, we... Oh my gosh! This is why it goes back here. Because then I don't hit it when I talk with my hand. Oh man. It's a hot one. Where we're at. Hot. I can't even think. I'm going to have to take like... Fan breaks. Another... <laughs> it's too hot for this once the sleeves wow i'm seeing things it's so hot yeah i can't even do it a second time because i'm dying